Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, a suspicious guest stalks one of the employees. The second story, an entitled family demands that I order other guests around. They get banned. The third story, mass exodus triggered a chain reaction of resignations. The first story is, in which the author finally gets to tell a guest off. The cast, me, yours truly, FDA, Anna, an FDA coworker of mine, Ray, returning problem guest from abroad, Drew, our F&B manager. Our tale begins on a cold winter night, the month I can't quite recall. I've got the night shift, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., still waiting for some arrivals. In walks Ray with a reservation from hostel chairs, CC guaranteed but not prepaid. As we're going through the paperwork, he asks if I could guess where he's from. I just finished scanning his passport when he asked that, but I did not think to look at the passport itself or the data that we just received in our system. Going only by his last name, I took a wild guess and nearly hit a bullseye. The general area he's from tends to have languages and cultures overlap way past country borders. Moving on, while still making small talk, I ask how he would like to pay for the room. He insists he's already paid. I double check both our system and hostel chairs, but he's only ever given a guarantee. We have a little back and forth about this, but eventually he pays out and heads for his room. Months later he pops in again, this time with a membership to our brand, though still always booking through third parties so he only really gets points for what he spends on laundry and starts staying rather regularly, every two or three weeks, always for five or so nights. Some time goes by and my coworkers begin telling me how he always comes by the front desk to chat, especially when Anna is in. I jokingly mention he might have a crush on her. She is an attractive young woman after all. This is where the end of the fun begins. A few days go by and Anna says that Ray found her on social media, started messaging her too. She's declining any and all advances he's trying to make, but he keeps on trying. It's at this time we start getting to know more about him. It was pretty obvious. He was in our city for business since he always came and went in expensive looking suits, and always had a really nice car pick him up in front of the hotel. Turns out he's a CEO of at least one company, co-founder in some others, and the heir to another pretty big company in his home country. And he's begun to try his luck more and more often, and more and more aggressively. The moment we realized trouble might be brewing was when he had one of his associates, his goons we call them, bring a $250 bouquet of roses to Anna while she was working at the front desk. This associate didn't even ask if she'd accept them, just asked if she was indeed Anna and shoved the bouquet in her hands, turned around and left. She went on to try and shut him down on a nearly daily basis now to no avail. Some more shenanigans happen, he hosts a couple of his own events at our conference rooms, because they've been kicked out of all their previous locations, but nevertheless, let us fast forward to just a little over a month ago. I wasn't present for this part of the story, I've only heard it from my coworkers. Anna was just relieved after her night shift and was leaving, when just outside the door he got in front of her and wouldn't let her go on her way, always stepping in front of her when she tried to get past him. He wanted her to get in his car, go somewhere with him for a date and let him take her home. Drew noticed and told him to leave her alone which provided sufficient enough at the time. After all this, Anna did not think it necessary to bring all this to management's attention because she didn't want to be the talk of the company, and because from her own perspective she was handling it just fine, or at least this is what she told me. After another time skip of three weeks, I go to relieve Anna from the night shift. Ray is seemingly just checking out. Turns out he'd been there for at least 10 minutes when I got there and stayed there for 15 more. As she was handing the shift over, he kept interrupting us with questions to Anna, mostly regarding why he can't find her on social media anymore, and repeatedly asking for her number after being told flat nose each and every time. It was the fifth time he'd asked when I couldn't just listen to it anymore, and told him, look, if she said no, then she said no. Knock it off. He looked baffled for a moment, then turned around and went to stand at the lobby windows for a solid 15 minutes. During these 15 minutes, Anna went and changed from her uniform and came back to relax in the back office, located just behind the front desk, 
until she were to leave for her train. Not long after she entered the office, Ray came up to my desk and started going off on me mostly about how he's a customer and a VIP at that. Yeah, you always book through whichever third party you find cheapest. Not exactly a VIP. He's very good friends with my GM. GM has never even seen this man. He probably meant our coworker from sales who arranged his events. He's going to own this company very soon. It's in Chinese hands at the very end of the chain. Good luck getting it from them. None of what's happening around me is my business. It literally is, especially if it concerns the safety of my colleagues. I should just stick to doing my job and nothing else. See above, and that he never wants to see me again. I'm assuming he meant he's going to get me fired. Spoiler, not happening. Now, this guy is not that threatening. I'm a 5'9 guy with some pounds to spare. He's a few good inches taller than me and he was trying his very best to scare me with his body language too. And he did manage to trigger my fight or flight response. I'm sorry to say that I did not give him the decking I believed he deserved, but it did take pretty much all my willpower to stand still and not do anything stupid. After his rent, he left the lobby. This whole parade above ended at about 7.15 a.m., and it was a slow morning, a really slow one, so I had all the time in the world to answer phone calls. When one came at about 7.45 a.m., I chimed in with the usual so-and-so hotel, city name, how can I help you? The caller hung up immediately. I didn't think much of it. Sometimes people dial the wrong number. Zoe came in for an 8 to 8 shift, so about 15 minutes after the whole ordeal with Ray. I didn't tell her all about it right then and there because I thought it more important to get through our daily work. At about 8.45 a.m. we get another call, the second call of the day, and I immediately notice it's the same number from before. This time Zoe picks up, and lo and behold if it isn't Ray. He's calling because he left something very valuable in the safe in his room, and he wanted to rent the same room for that night, so housekeeping doesn't open the safe, and he can collect it when he actually arrives a day later. Because yes, he already had a reservation for two days after his departure. So because it was a holiday in our country, no one from management or the reservations department was in, so we couldn't flat out refuse service to anyone unless the hotel was completely full. So we go ahead and place the reservation for him, and since he's been known to always pay out in full without issues, Zoe lets him do this without prepayment, seeing as he's not here. So we ring up housekeeping and tell them that they can clean the room, just don't touch the safe. They say, okay, no problem. 15 minutes later, the HK manager shows up and goes, so about that safe in 123, one of the girls already emptied it by the time you rang. Okay, no problem. We'll just place his stuff in the safe in the luggage room and ring up Ray that he doesn't have to rent the room for the night. So what exactly did he forget in his room, you may ask? Only about 20,000 euros in cash. We ring him and immediately he gets upset and arranges for some of his goons to come in and count the money. So not a single euro is missing. About halfway through this, Kate comes in for her shift. So we fill her in and she basically takes over the whole situation. Other than the goons coming in to count the money, that's the last I saw of Ray so far though I did have all the days off since. I've been asking my coworkers for updates, and after I got them, my FOM and the HR manager also called me to tell me basically the same thing. Our GM will have a very stern and one-sided conversation with Ray about him, either having to pack up for good or be on his best behavior, and never talk to us again regarding anything outside of matters of his reservations. Personally, I would have liked it if there were no either-ors in this story, but it's a beginning. The second story is... EPs demand I make a couple stop kissing in the restaurant. I work at an American style restaurant. While we do have a small bar, it's more of a family style type restaurant than a pub style restaurant. I have worked at this restaurant for about six years and have had my fair share of entitled customers. This weekend, I had one of the worst families come in. They were celebrating a birthday and the party size was 18 with both kids and adults. The grandmother and grandfather were there as well as the parents of the kids. The kids were all either cousins or siblings, and the birthday kid had a few friends. This wasn't a catering event, and we have large parties like this all the time. They were in the middle of one of the rooms, for lack of a better word, and there were booths on multiple sides of them. In one of the booths near the windows, there was this couple. They were teens, both 14. I just finished student teaching and I knew the kids. They had separate periods, but both kids seemed like good kids. The boy's a football player. He's very smart and gets good grades. I'm going into history education, and the teacher I was student teaching for is very much into the model of giving kids freedom on what they do, 
So most units ended in a project where they could do a slideshow, essay, video, research paper, etc. about a topic in the era, i.e. the Dust Bowl in the 30s, the stock market crash in the 30s, redlining in the 50s. She also loved more creative projects, like ones talking about how protest music was used in various eras. This boy always did his about sports and how they were affected by politics. He knows everything about the history of sports, especially American football. It's insane. The girl is a sweet girl. She's always at his games. She's very friendly. And while never showing intense interest in any topic, she's also a smart kid with a lot of potential. The boy was in his outfit. He had just finished practice. Him and his girlfriend weren't bothering anyone and were talking to each other. I ended up talking a bit to them, just because they wanted to talk to me, and I think the boy liked talking to me because I was a young male figure who he could relate to. The family that was there was rude to begin with, and the little kids were acting up a bit, but they weren't being too bad. However, when the parents of one of the kids saw the boy and the girl kissing, they had an issue with it. The mother of the kids asked me to tell the kids to stop kissing. When I told her I wouldn't do that, she got increasingly upset at me. I told them that there was no rules against kissing your loved one in our restaurant because there aren't. The mother proceeds to insist it's inappropriate for her kids and nieces and nephews to see that, since there were toddlers there. There were also older kids, and how the kids should keep it to themselves. When I again told her there was nothing I could do, she went over to the kids and tried to get them to stop. I was also getting dirty looks from the other adults in their party. This woman storms up to them and tells them to stop kissing because there are kids around. They politely ask her to go away and she refuses. She then notices the boy had painted nails and went on about how disgusting it was. At this point, the boy looked like he was about to punch her, so we had multiple staff members come over to try to de-escalate the situation. We told her we would get the owner, and the other parents in the party started complaining about how we were being ridiculous and how they should sue the restaurant for indecent exposure. The owner comes and tries to get her to calm down, but she's still going on with her Think of the Children rant. She had to be brought into a separate part of the restaurant to be talked to. We waited until the kids were done eating to bring her back. After they left, we banned the parents from their restaurant for the foreseeable future. The third story is... Caused a chain reaction of everyone quitting today. I had been working here at this company since October, and they promise you a one-month review after your first 30 days to discuss a wage increase. The company sells mainly office supplies, among other things. So their main focus isn't mainly on sales themselves, but getting people to buy insurance claims on their expensive items and signing up new customers for their rewards program. I have been leader of truck, where I put away the freight that comes in, and most of the time I'm the only one who can finish it efficiently and in a time effective manner. I'm almost never on cash register because I'm doing stuff around the store. My friend moved back to town and needed a job, so I helped him get hired and very quickly. He started to get frustrated with the job, and didn't see how I could bear to work there for as long as I did. After a month of my friend being there, he was notified that he would be getting a raise, and this immediately made him confused. He asked our manager why he was giving him a raise, and not me. Our manager simply said that I'm not as good of a worker as someone who sells a lot of insurance claims and gets reward signups. My friend notified me of this and told me that I needed a raise or we needed to quit. I told him that I would have to think about it. I hate confrontation, so I could come up with a good idea. We come into work today and our manager has cut our hours in half. I asked him why he did this, and he explained to me the exact same thing he told my friend, that I wasn't as good of a worker as the people who could sell those stupid things. I said okay, and walked out back to the register. I sat there for a few minutes before finally saying, F this, and taking off my company shirt and leaving it at the register. My friend having seen this immediately does the same and walks out with me. Another one of our co-workers texted us, saying yeah, I'm out too and send us a video of him doing the exact same thing we did. The best part about it? The person who mainly opens the store also texted us, saying he's quitting too, and that he will not be showing up in the morning. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.